Well, this is the Dave's Farm dead car report. Volvo's not dead yet, but we have an American tourist here who's 17 learning how to fix cars. We found a blown off hose on the vacuum side of the intake system, which was a big diameter hose, so it was causing it not to send enough vacuum to the fuel injection thing that measures airflow, so we couldn't keep it running. And then we took it for a ride, had lots of power, but kept cutting out. So now we took the fuel filter off, blowing and cleaning it, and reinstalling the assembly. The high output quad four Olds Achieva was dead in the water last week because the young guy let someone borrow it. He never had any off-roading experience. He hit a rock, broke the aluminum oil pan. So I've ground off all the crappy area. It wasn't that bad of a break. And I've used fiberglass reinforced body filler to make the repair. So it's going to be fine and it keeps it away from rocks. And we all know this thing's got a broke differential, not fixed yet. For a while the Lumina had a hard to replace, or I mean very hard to repair, hole punched in the transmission side cover in behind the wheel and the motor mount. So by lowering the frame, jacking up the engine, removing the motor mount, a big blob of silicone fixed that. So she's not leaking anymore and driving great. Garrett's, Garrett's tempo has definitely seen better days. Still running fine. He still has hopes for it, but huh, not much. Tranny's bad too. And the iconic redneck roller coaster, well it's so rusty it's almost breaking in half and it has a blown head gasket which always happens with those 2.2's. So it runs sometimes but not for long because it keeps putting water on the spark plugs and fouling it up. So if anybody would love to donate a 90 to 94 Cavalier or Sunbird but preferably Cavalier four cylinder automatic to Dave's farm it will be the new redneck roller coaster. The only stipulation, it can't be too rusty. Message me if you got one of these old cars, it's not too bad. And the soft Chevy truck is pretty much done for. We made a video racing it with the Ford truck. As soon as we got the RPMs up, you know with the knock knock motor, the motor let go a few more cylinders or rods. Now it just barely runs and drives, sounds absolutely horrible. So it's done for, it's just scrap, it's got a new tranny, that'll be about all we save on it. The Molesabil hasn't been driven much lately except for the last race because it's got a bad starter motor. It's good for like 10 minutes of use. As soon as the starter motor heats up by the heat of the motor, it won't start again. Also the alternator is bad. just don't happen to have one right now. One of the, just the old fashioned General Motors everyday alternators. Small size. The 90 Cutlass Supreme. Well, Pug Life didn't know how to joyride when he first came out here a couple months ago so he took it out in the back 40 and went over the wavy ground really fast. It rammed the rad cradle into the motor and destroyed the rad. Still ran pretty good. Everything else was fine, but you couldn't put a rad in it too well. It was, it was no space. Everything was crushed. So we sold it to a kid for like 20 bucks. Comes out here. And we tied the front end of the tractor, pulled it all back out, put a rad in it. Only problem was he wanted to race it last week on that wheat field with no coolant. Yeah, it, was, it went pretty good for two laps. Now it ran like a bag of crap. Has no power. Wouldn't go over 30 kilometers an hour. Kid got sick of it. Drove it through a ditch. Ripped the tranny out of it. Anyways, so she's done for. Scrap. The $100 Jeep only lasted half a day. I didn't check it myself, but Backdoor J, I mean Backyard J, the vehicle destroyer, says it has a bad fuel pump. We can probably fix that. Glan P's got a bad cooler tube to the throttle body for the coolant goes through so that's repairable and there's the other Astro van that I'm going to take the differential out of <laughs> same kid that bought that stupid Cutlass bought that thing for 20 bucks after it was beaten to hell by the owner out here so motor was knocking starter motor went bad all kinds of problems so he just attacked it with the tractor it's got good, some good parts for it. Still a good 700 R4 tranny and a good differential. Oh well. And the car that Jay killed. Well, technically still running, but the frame's so bad it keeps pulling the axle out of the socket. And the screaming GTS, don't scream no more. Seems like the timing belt may have broke under full throttle. There's no compression sound when you crank the motor. Happened all of a sudden. 16 valve motor could have bent all the exhaust valves. Well, we'll have to take the rocker cover off and take a look, see if it's repairable or not. Oh, on this end, 200 sex. Well, racing, one of the guys said he noticed the oil light coming on, but he kept racing. Gee whiz. Now the motor's blown. 
had a whole bunch of rod knock when we pulled it over, ran a bit more, and totally conked out. She's done for. We love this car. It's still strong. Got lots of life left in it. Does anybody have a 1.6 liter motor for one of these cars I'd like to donate? Like from a Sentra or something? We'll put it back to life. Even the bus had its first problem after that race that day with Jen. The front caliper in that wheel seized up. And the bus got stuck out in the field. It wouldn't even come back by itself. It was just skidding that wheel. So under full throttle and a push with a tractor, we managed to push it off the field. And a hundred dollars later, including tax, replace the caliper. Now it works great. Even the old Ford diesel has a problem. Running great. We raced it. Wait for the video. Bodies collapsed so much that the door fell down and wouldn't close. The pins didn't line up. So, <laughs> who needs a door at Dave's farm? But the other problem is now we're back to bump starting it until I fix the starter motor. I bought a really good working used starter motor last year, but sitting out there in the snow, corrosion got into it and now the starter motor's messed up. So I think if I take it apart, disassemble it, clean it up, it'll be fine. The Jetta that we just changed the tranny on. Well, the tranny's blown again. What do you guess? I think we're going to scrap it. The 98 Sunfire. <laughs> Just had a piece of crap motor since we got it. The motor got worse. It's not even drivable and jumpable anymore. Jumping, jumpable anymore. So we're gonna scrap that one too. We give all these cars away to free. Who anybody who's got a trailer to pick them up. The Dakota runs great. Seems to drive okay. But the steering box in some positions goes click, 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 and the steering wheel just keeps going round and round. Kind of dangerous to drive when sometimes you have no steering. I don't know if I'm going to fix that or not. It's a pain in the ass, and then it means I have to buy a steering box for it. Jen's car. Still runs like new, beaten and abused, but we thought it had a bad tranny. After a beating in the back 40, it had to be towed back. Picked it up, checked it out, turned out to be just a broken axle. We may fix that. The 92 Crapola. Well, runs good. Got a hole poked in the tranny, which silicone is partially fixed, so it kind of leaks so we don't like to drive it that much. It wastes tranny oil. But it died out in the field. Could be the fuel pump. At least they're easy to change in these cars. You just take out the back seat. Haven't checked it yet. The Men in Black 84 Crown Victoria that lost all the races and broke down. She's done for. Motor's still good. Scrap the rest. Cressa's got a messed up fuel injection system so she's getting scrapped too. 93 Spirit. Motor runs great. Airbag blew up in the guy's face, but big hole in the tranny and so many problems now since these guys didn't know how to off-road a car. First, first one they owned, you know. Anyways, they want to do a motor blow video with it. And the Aero Crud van never recovered from a swim in the lake. The 94 Buick Regal has that Jesus sticker on the dashboard. Well, we let some people drive it in the field. Tubers. Some overheated it by filling the rat up with grass and keep driving it. Some cranked the starter motor when it ran out of gas till it killed the starter motor. So now we have to find a starter motor for it. The Honda Civic still runs great. It doesn't drive quite right because the tranny doesn't shift through all the gears. Sometimes it goes to second gear, sometimes it makes it to third. It usually never gets to fourth gear. And the front brake caliper is blown so it doesn't hold fluid. Got to fix that. Still has life. Rick Stranger hasn't been used for a while because he says it's running terrible. I haven't checked it out myself, so I've got no diagnosis. We've just been too busy fixing the other cars, so it may still have life. Arm has rusted off the body, and there's no body in the nearby area to reattach it to, so you can drive it in reverse. You drive it in forward, the wheel gets caught under the fender well and drags. This car still runs great, but after that one super jump, it was so rotten underneath the front fenders that there was nothing attached to the shock towers. So the shock towers just bent in and the steering's too screwed up to drive. So it's scrap. The El Taramino, well, let's have to see if I can get it running. It didn't start a couple weeks ago. Pops and fires. Check the fuel. It's got fuel coming with the fuel rail. Looks kind of green. Smells really old and crappy. So maybe some fresh fuel will get this thing going. If not, scrap. The 95 VTEC Honda, running great. But rat is crushed and needs a little work back there, including a tire. And the Camry. Starts up, runs great. As soon as you try to rev the motor, keeps dying out. Can't go past 2000. So I think it's just a clogged fuel filter. All we do is take them off and shake them up and blow them up backwards. 
probably be okay. And Rick's 96Z24 high output four cylinder five speed. This would be a good car in the field. Except when he got it, someone clipped the wires and stole the instrument cluster. Only problem is, although we do have the right key and everything for the car, it's got a GM security system built into it. So when you turn the tumbler, it doesn't send the signal anymore to the ignition system on the car to the computer, so the car just starts and dies. Rick thinks he knows how to make it run with some resistors. Let's find out. The motor's fine. So that's it for now. As you can see, I spend all my weekdays just fixing cars, and on the weekends we break them and make videos. What a life. But the pay is damn good. Thanks, YouTube. Oh, finally, almost I forgot. This turd, the turd bird. Sweetest running 3.8 you ever saw. Some tubers came up a couple weeks ago. They were dying to drive a vehicle. I was saving this for the fields, for ourselves, for racing and power sliding and drifting and all that stuff, being rear drive. Well, in their glory to drive, they didn't pay attention to the temperature of the gauges, clogged the rat up with grass and wheat straw, overheated the motor, blew the head gaskets and cracked the head. Now it just runs like a bag of crap. Pu -pu 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 -pu. Lots of white smoke out the exhaust. She's done for. Some people, just loan them your car, all they do is push on the gas and don't pay attention to nothing, and then they just take off and don't replace your car or fix it. Wonderful.